Hi, I'm Justine Dorigo Patrick. I want to first thank you for your interest in our article and also want to provide some highlights that we hope you'll find meaningful as you read it. In this article, we explored our own questions around how one works therapeutically from a critical theoretical lens while simultaneously being rooted in a postmodern philosophy. We certainly see these perspectives as connected and also sense unique calls to action from each. Critically informed practice places overt emphasis on engaging in activism in ways that explicitly call out, highlight, deconstruct, or teach about oppressive social conditions that constrain our clients' lives and contribute, perhaps even create, the problems or challenges they are faced with confronting. Postmodern informed practice also supports social critique, but places emphasis on accountability to multiple perspectives as well as honoring client perspectives when they may differ from our own expert opinions. Ultimately, the broader questions that were raised for us and served as the impetus for this research and for writing this article were, how do we maintain a critical lens while also being open to other ways of understanding client struggles, particularly when clients may not see their struggle as being rooted in oppressive social conditions? And also, how do we maintain accountability to multiple perspectives and to client voice without missing explicit opportunities to connect client struggles to larger socio-cultural issues? In order to begin exploring these questions of ours, we conducted a qualitative grounded theory study to examine how therapists describe doing the both and in their clinical work. Ultimately, what we found among the therapists that we spoke with was that each one was very clear about the importance of noticing and attending to critical social issues in their work, and also spoke about how they attempt to account for therapeutic power when doing so. In light of this, we observed what we defined as a set of shared constructionist practices that all therapists engaged in in an effort to be mindful of how they were using their position and influence within the clinical conversation. These included therapist transparency, inquiry as intervention, and staying experience near, which you can read more about in our article. We also noticed that all therapists described engaging in activism in their work and noted it as an ethical responsibility. However, there were striking differences between therapists in relation to the kind of therapeutic activism they preferred to enact. Every therapist sought to challenge dominant oppressive forces, but described doing so in ways that led us to define two distinct kinds of activism, at least for now. The two forms of activism that we highlight in this article are activism through countering and activism through collaborating. We hope that you enjoy reading and that what we have offered contributes to growing conversations around the complexities and importance of these ideas. We also hope this serves as an opening to multiply our visions of what activism can look like therapeutically. It is our belief that activism, in all of its forms, is as needed now as ever.